This case in particular involved hours of video evidence, which when combined with old-fashioned police work, uncovered the truth. These detectives deserve all the credit in the world for carefully analyzing the leads and the evidence for weeks before coming to their conclusion. Joining us for more on this, John Spillbore is a legal analyst. Steve Rogers is a retired lieutenant detective for the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department and former member of the FBI Joint Terror Task Force. So we've got a good crew here to talk about all of this. I um, wanted to get your take first on the police superintendent. The, really the first time we've heard from him, and he was very blunt. An outstanding leader, very passionate. He nailed it when he said those resources could have been used to help the victims of gun violence. But Dana, there were two elements he was under a lot of pressure with. Not only was he investigating the so-called hate crime and bias crime, but Smollett tried to tie that crime, that activity into the President of the United States and his followers, and, the, and that police department had to worry about would that spur more violence based on a very false narrative that the President's uh, uh, supporters are racist, etc. So he did an outstanding job. You mentioned the resources. We have uh, some stats here. Um, the police saying that in this case, as they try, try to hunt it all down, 55 cameras searched, 50 plus search warrants, 50 plus, you got to go to a court to get those things. This is not easy. And then a hundred plus interviews. This is a lot of work, Jonna. Yeah, it was a very thorough investigation. And can I just say for starters, I think it's a shame that this talented actor wasted his best performance <laughs> on committing a crime because that's exactly what he did. And it was at the, although it wasn't even really that good of a performance. No, it wasn't <laughs> because it was very stupidly done. I don't think he anticipated that there would be all these resources put into finding out what really happened here. Mm -hmm. And look, he's in a lot of trouble. However, I historically, people in his position don't always see the inside of a jail cell. And I'm still on the fence as to whether they're going to really throw the book at him. Uh, his lawyers are saying this. Um, like any other citizen, Mr. Smollett enjoys the presumption of innocence, particularly when there has been an investigation like this one where information, both true and false, has been repeatedly leaked. Given these circumstances, we intend to conduct a thorough investigation and to mount an aggressive defense. Well, let me ask you something, Steve. Like, okay, so the police just went through their investigation. How are they going to do a different investigation at this point? Well, there's not going to be another investigation. Look, the defense could say all they want, do all they want, but the fact of the matter is, is that police superintendent in his department, as the chief said, good detective legwork solved this crime. So they're not going to have any uh, mounting defense other than if they try to say there's medical issues, mental health issues, but he's going to be found guilty. He will yeah. be found guilty, and I hope, as you say, he goes to jail. Well, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, um, and the superintendent, Eddie Johnson, we have sound from him talking about how the money was paid to the brothers yeah okay do we have that sound to play yeah we have evidence that we have the check that uh, he used to pay them so the 3500 was for the two of them in total and then 500 on upon return we have the phone records that that uh, clearly indicate that they talked to each other quite a bit before the incident after the incident and while they were out of the country so he wrote a check. Yeah. This isn't funny, but I did chuckle when I heard that part. That's like, you know, showing up for a drug deal. And here, will you take my credit card? I mean, if you really wanted to get away with this, you're going to pay cash. That's what criminals try to do most of the time. But, yeah, I agree that this... I don't think his defense is going to be, we're going to find you not guilty. The defense is going to be, let's keep you out of jail. Because sometimes, as a defense attorney, that's the best you got, Dana. And I think that's going to And what about here. the brothers, Steve? Do they face any possible, I mean, I know they're cooperating, but they did participate in this scheme. They did. They were drawn into this because of money. Based on the totality of circumstances that the police have about them, they may get off. But the sad part about this was he, he, he tried to make this into a hate crime. Yeah. There could have been a lot of problems. Blaming a specific group of people, the supporters of the president of the United States, for goodness sakes. This could have been very bad for that city, but thank God those cops did a good job. And Jonna, and also maybe both of you could speak to this, because Mike Tobin reports that the FBI is looking into the letter. That was the first thing that was sent back on January. January 18th. Um, how different might that be for this case? I'll tell you what, these state charges are going to look like a slap on the wrist if the FBI sinks their teeth into this, because not only is there possible mail fraud, but this could lead to a terrorist charge because of the fake white powder, again, another fake element to this, that he put in the envelope. That's going to be even more serious than what, what Illinois is going to do to him. Steve, will his defense attorneys try to make him look sympathetic? 
And somehow? Oh, oh, they will. As I said earlier, he's going to come in, the poor guy. He had problems in the past. They'll use anything, but maybe to your point, you're right. It may not be a not guilty thing, but let's make sure you don't yeah, go to jail. Just keep him out of jail. But, you know, in the eyes of public opinion, he's guilty. Of course he's guilty, and he should go to jail. But just a last word from you, John. You said that there are, in the past, we know these big cases, and it yeah. turns out that people that file false reports, they don't always get in trouble. No, two of them came to mind immediately. The, one, the woman who accused the Duke lacrosse people, she never even was, was charged with filing a false report and years ago the runaway bride Jennifer Wilbanks she was charged with a felony never saw the inside of a jail cell so what's gonna happen here and he gets charged and goes to jail that turns the tide regarding that particular right. situation so we're gonna see him in just a few, um, at the bottom of this hour um, will he then immediately walk out like he goes out is there a bail is there Not anything they'll probably either make him post a small bail or no bail the whole point of bail is to make sure he shows, shows up, up. Okay. He's got a job still right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. All right, but. Jonna and Steve, thank you so much for being here You're today. Welcome. Okay.